Urban planning is devoted to building a consensus around a vision for the future and then implementing that vision. Urban planning also has numerous intersections like real estate, transportation, the environment, and social and racial equality. I'd suggest urban planning as one of the most insightful possible ways to evaluate how the world has changed in the past decade. So let's take a look at how far planning has come and where it came up short in the past 10 years, and also hopefully start to form some ideas about how the world will change in the 2020s. The Great Recession is at the center of every planning story from the 2010s. From a planning perspective, the Great Recession can be remembered as the moment the economy of the United States broke under the pressure of a century's worth of single-family homes and car commutes. At the beginning of the decade, the Great Recession still had the potential to forge a new era of planning and development, but the economic recovery of the 2010s mostly failed to achieve that transformative potential. Perhaps most critically, the recession exacerbated inequality. In 2010, we were talking about foreclosures and zombie subdivisions. In 2019, we're talking about a housing affordability crisis and growing numbers of homeless people living on the street. Millennials came of age during the Great Recession, getting blamed or credited for everything under the sun along the way. But it's also clear that the Great Recession didn't do any favors for the country's largest, most diverse generation ever. Every industry related to urban planning has spent the past 10 years trying to figure out what millennials want. And all the same industries will probably spend the next 10 years doing exactly the same. The oldest millennials are already well into their late 30s, and they'll soon be the elders of society. Where millennials move as they gain more control in politics and the economy is a big question that loomed over everything in the 2010s and waits to be answered in full in the 2020s. The Great Recession also had disparate effects among communities of color in the United States, but the causes of these effects go much, much further back than the 2010s. During the 2010s, the internet offered new ways to present evidence about the causes and effects of decades of discriminatory and racist planning and development practices. But only raising awareness is far too little, far too late. Some cities and states are starting to address discriminatory regulations, like exclusionary zoning, but discrimination is still deeply embedded in the land use, housing markets, transportation systems, and environmental and public health outcomes of the country. One of the most pressing and necessary needs of the next decade will be to finally respond to this moral crisis. Speaking of moral crisis, there's also climate change. The decade was indelibly marked by a series of catastrophic weather events, as well as a steady stream of more mundane events, like something called sunny day flooding, as the risks posed by climate change began to reveal themselves. Meanwhile, the Trump administration has been busy dismantling international agreements and federal environmental regulations, while scientists have been frantically sounding alarms. Much of the political and cultural will devoted to climate change throughout the decade focused on adaptation and resilience rather than prevention and mitigation. The world needs both and it needs it now. 2029 will be too late. Some of the most obvious and drastic signs of evolution in the past decade occurred in the world of transportation. Seemingly overnight, Uber and Lyft completely changed the world. Uber was founded in 2009 so we're talking about an invention that will always be associated with the 2010s. In 2019, we know that all of this ride hailing has resulted in more cars on the road and fewer people taking public transit, so the ride hailing innovation has fallen short of its idealistic ambitions. It's also possible that in 2019, we're seeing the first signs of a tipping point away from car-centric planning, as cities like New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Portland are blocking cars from vehicle lanes and entire streets to prioritize more efficient forms of transportation. Whether that trend continues and expands to other parts of the country will be one of the most important questions to watch in the 2020s. This is only the first draft of an evaluation of urban planning in the 2010s, but the decisions made by planners will have consequences for decades to come. These types of evaluations will evolve as those consequences become more obvious. 
For more details on all of the subjects I've described in this video, please click on the link below, which will jump to an article on the Planetism website.